Good morning and welcome to this, our second Sunday in Advent. We have a call to worship. The light shines in the darkness. We come to worship, seeking the peace of Christ. Shine into our lives and your world this Advent. Renew us, Jesus has called to be peacemakers this day. The Lord be with you. And I also with you. day of preparation and peace. Open our hearts, O Lord, and make us ready to receive you. Repentance, changing our attitudes, our lives, is the beginning of our peace and preparation. Lord, give us courage and confidence. God will fill us with joy and peace as we become witnesses to God's love. Lord, help us to be faithful servants all of our days. Today, we light two candles. The first is the candle of hope, reminding us to watch and wait for what God is about to do. The second is the candle of peace, a candle of readiness, enabling us to look at our lives, to get rid of all those things that keep us from God, to change our ways and live as God would have us live. Let us pray. Patient and loving God, we so easily launch ourselves in preparation for the secular festival of giving and parties and the swirl of social events. But we forget that the true preparation and peace is the readiness of our hearts to receive you. Help us look again at our lives and turn them around so that they may be in tune with your will. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Listen to the good news as it is written in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. The proclamation of John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ our Lord. Dressed in clothes made of camel's hair And everyone went out to see him there in the desert Down by the river He said, I am the one I claim to be The prophet I say spoke of me I am the voice of one Crying in the wilderness Today is the second Sunday in Advent. Hence, we've just lit the candle of peace in our watching and waiting journey. Last week, the gospel called us to be awake and watchful of the world around us and the world within us. And today's gospel calls us to repent and prepare for Jesus and to point others to the Prince 
of peace. In today's gospel, we are told about a weird man by the name of John the Baptist, who was sent by God to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. John did this by preaching in the wilderness of Judea, telling the masses to repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. John was the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. He was different from other people because we are told that he wore clothing that was made of camel hair with a leather belt around his waist and ate locust and wild honey. Matthew tells us that as weird as John the Baptist might seem, many people went to him to be baptized in the River Jordan and they even confessed sins to him. John was doing what he was called to do. The religious leaders of the time approached John, thinking that the silence of heaven had been broken and that at last the long-awaited Messiah was about to come. The chosen one had finally come because John the Baptist had the actions. Are you the Messiah most wanted to know? I really do not blame people for being curious if John the Baptist was the Messiah because the Israelites had been waiting for the coming of Christ for many years. In the Old Testament, we find prophets promising God's people that God will send them a savior and redeemer from the house of David. Therefore, according to the people, John fits the description of the one who is expected to come and be Messiah. In answering this question, John humbles himself and tells him that I am not the one that you think I am. I am not the Messiah. They are all confused and amazed by this. I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, making the way straight for the Lord. I, John, baptize you with water for repentance. But the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John was sent to prepare the way and call people to repentance in preparation for the coming of the Prince of Peace, the true Messiah. John is merely the forerunner, standing in the place of Christ, getting people ready and encouraging them not to look at him as the one who holds power and authority. John doesn't take the credits of his calling. He lowers himself and lifts up the one who is coming. He pays the way for our Lord Jesus Christ. John is not the Messiah, but he is sent to bear witness for the Messiah. John's father, Zechariah, prophesied in Luke 1, you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. From the birth of John, he already had taken on this role to point people towards Christ. As he grew, he fulfilled this prophecy and called people to repent and make room for the one who is coming, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. This is the call in today's gospel, to fulfill the prophecy and call people to repent and prepare for the Prince of Peace. We are all called to prepare the way for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We do not need to look a particular way. We do not need to be perfect because no human is. As weird and unworthy as we are, we do qualify to point people to Christ. We do qualify to prepare the way for Christ. I wonder what would have happened to John 
had he taken the spotlights for himself and refused to be the maker of the way. Many of us refuse to be the chefs of the kitchen, working behind the scene for the masses to benefit. John is a good example for he did not take Christ's credit. He knew his position. He knew his calling. He knew that he was called to pave and prepare a way for the one who is coming, the Messiah. On this second Sunday of Advent, let us prepare our hearts and repent so that Christ can remain in us and we in Christ. Let us point people to Jesus so that they can gain a life-giving experience. Remember that it's not about us, but rather about Christ, the Prince of Peace. We aim at lifting Christ and not ourselves. Let Christ trend this Advent whilst we work behind the scenes for the benefits of God's kingdom, because Emmanuel, God is with us. Amen. Repentance, changing our attitudes, our lives, is the beginning of our peace and preparation. And so let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandment, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. So we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the collect of the day. God of timeless grace, you fill us with joyful expectation. Make us ready for the message that prepares the way, so that with uprightness of heart and holy joy, we may eagerly await the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
as we come to the prayers of the church, if you're watching this at home, maybe at the introduction for each section, maybe you'd just like to switch it off and to make your own petition and requests and then switch on again as we move through each section. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in his name. We pray for your church throughout the world, and especially for this diocese, and for Corsinati, our bishop, and Tarbo, our metropolitan. So we lift up all the members of this congregation, and especially Nabutle and Susan, in this busy time for clergy, for our wardens and our council, and for all the members of the congregation, that this preparation for Advent time will be very real, and not just a waiting time for Christmas. So we give your church power to proclaim the gospel of Christ, and grant that we and all Christian people may be united in truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the resources of the world and its beauty. We thank you for the rain that's fallen, the beauty of trees in full leaf, bird calls, and Lord, we lift up to you also the abuse of those resources through greed, exploitation, injustice, or the use of resources as a leverage in warfare during wintertime. Give to all a reverence for your creation and make us worthy stewards of your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. We think especially of those countries undergoing civil turmoil at the moment, especially in Iran, China, and of course in the Ukraine. Again, we pray for an end to this conflict. And we pray especially for this country and its leaders that you will call to leadership people with a vision for this country. Give wisdom to those in authority. Direct this and every nation in the way of justice and peace that all may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our families and friends and those with special claims upon us. You might like to name them. Give grace to all whose lives are closely linked with ours, that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Hear our prayer. And we pray for those in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. As we pray especially for Peter and his family. To all who suffer, give courage, healing, and a steadfast trust in your love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving your servants who have gone before us. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. 
down by the Jordan, a prophet named John was baptizing, preaching a message the people found bold and There by the river the crowd came with great expectation Are you God's joy? And one sent here to rescue our nation No, John replied He who is mightier than I Judges and offer salvation The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. The earth is full of your knowledge and glory. You made all creatures to live in peace and safety and sent a little child to lead us. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and prophets, apostles and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Baptized by John, Christ came to deliver us from sin and to pour out the Holy Spirit upon your church. By our faith in Christ, we have the hope of eternal life. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer ourselves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. 
who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and after he had given you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this and eat this is my body which is broken for you do this so you may never forget me In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do so, so that you may not forget me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ for us. By your Spirit, Unite us with Christ and with your church in all the world. Fill us with wisdom and understanding, knowledge and power, and grant that we may live in harmony with one another as we await the coming of the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Draw near and receive this gift of great love given for each of us. For the coming of the Lord. Make way in your hearts for love. Get rid of all anger and fear, for God is about to bring incredible light to the world. Go in peace and confidence as witnesses to God's love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.